Hey guys, in this month's top five, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite British period dramas. So, anyone who knows me knows that I am obsessed with all things British television, British movies, just British culture and history. Um, so, so yeah, I, I in particular just, I, I love all things British. TV, especially, you know, historical related things. Um, so yeah, for the purposes of this video, because I was like, oh lord, this list, I, I can go on and on and on. I, I can probably come up with a good 30-something television shows. Um, so the, for, for the purposes of this video, I, I narrowed it down to, to British period dramas that only had, like, one season, like they were only intended to be one season, or if they were something that were, was more like a mini series with just a couple episodes or so. So that's how I've narrowed down this particular video to make it uh, a little more easy on myself on on how to kind of narrow down all of the, the British television because I, I've I've watched a lot of it. There's a lot of shows that I've forgotten a love. So yeah, maybe in the future I'll do another video similar to this. But yeah, it'd, it'd be more like British period dramas that have multiple seasons, you know. Uh, so yeah, let's get going. At number five, the 2008 adaptation of Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. Uh, oh my goodness, you guys. Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Uh, I, I, I love the book by Thomas Hardy. It, it's a very just heartbreaking book, you guys, if you've never read it. Um, th this adaptation, like I said, it premiered in 2008. I think it only had about three episodes, three or four episodes, something like that. Um, this adaptation starred uh, Jim Arderton as our main character, Tess, and also um, uh, Eddie Redmayne um, as her love interest, Angel. And then uh, Hans Matheson, who play who plays her cousin um, Alec. So yeah, really great cast right there. Yeah, Jim Art and Hans Hans Matheson, Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. I freaking love it, you guys. It's already perfection. Um, but yeah, what you need to know about Tess of the D'Urvilles. Uh, I've not seen this miniseries in a very long time, you guys, and I've not read the book either in a really long time, so I'm trying to remember the plot summary as I'm going with this video. Um, what I recall of Tess of the D'Urvilles, what you kind of need to know, it follows a, a very young, innocent, naive girl, <laughs> you guys, that's, that's the key here, named uh, Tess. And she she's, she's she comes from a lower background. She's poor, um, but she receives this summons from uh, like her cousin uh, named Alec, who's very wealthy, um, and he is part of the D'Urbaville um, family tree, as I mentioned, very wealthy. And apparently, Tess is like part of this family too. Apparently, I can't quite remember all the details about how kind of that family tree worked out, but either way. Poor, like I mentioned, poor innocent naive Tess. She she goes to see this cousin of hers, Alec. He's very charming, but he is a serpent to you guys. He is a serpent tempting Eve is how I like to think of it. <laughs> um, and through a series of of very unfortunate events, you guys, um, Tess really just goes downhill with her life and some very unfortunate things happen to her, some unfortunate things happen between her and Alec, um, and the whole mini-series is, is, is Tess, you know, really trying to kind of move on from some of these terrible things, and yes, yeah, she meets Eddie Redmayne's character named Angel, and he is, he, as his name suggests, he's like this godsend for her, but once her past comes out to him, yeah, there's there's another little chain of events there that happens, and yeah, this miniseries, you guys, I, I I love this miniseries. I felt like it was a really perfect adaptation of the book because I read the book first before even watching this particular miniseries, uh, and I was really pleasantly surprised with it. Um, it manages to take some liberties here and there where it needs to uh, to to make it a bit more modern and appealing to a modern audience since it is a period drama because. Sometimes period dramas can be a little stiff, um, but um, it, it, it's a well-crafted miniseries, beautifully shot. Um, um, the casting is so amazing, and yeah, you, you the, the ending, oh my god, just such a, a breathtaking, heartbreaking 
ending. I, I definitely, I definitely cried at the end of this mini series. You guys, I won't say why, but I did cry. Um, so, so yeah. If you love the the, the book, I definitely recommend this 2008 adaptation. Um, it manages to kind of make things really appealing for a, for a, for a modern audience. It has a really great cast. And yeah, it, it definitely has some very sexy moments. <laughs> At number four, the 2006 adaptation of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, this 2006 adaptation stars Ruth Wilson. You guys, this is literally Ruth Wilson's very first role, because I think I remember getting on IMDb one day, maybe a couple months ago, and I was kind of looking through her IMDb page. And I was kind of blown away that this this leading huge role of Jane Eyre was given to Ruth Wilson, who had never done anything before. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ruth Wilson is playing our leading heroine, Jane Eyre. Um, and yeah, Mr. Mr. Rochester, you guys, the very complicated Mr. Rochester, played by Toby Stevens, who is always just a freaking brilliant, you guys. Oh my goodness. Uh, as is the case with Tess of the D'Urbervilles, um, Jane Eyre is another book that I had read prior to watching this adaptation. Um, and this, uh, just another gorgeous ad adaptation, you guys. Um, there's been a lot of adaptations of Jane Eyre over the years, but if I had to pick and choose, I really think this is my favorite adaptation. And I think a lot of people would probably claim that this is their their favorite adaptation of Jane Eyre as well. Um, how many episodes was this? This was about like three or four episodes as well, kind of the standard for British period dramas when they're adapt ad adapting books. Um, but yeah, what you need to know about Jane Eyre, we follow a we follow Jane Eyre when she's initially a little girl. She's sent to like a like a, like a convent or a boarding school or something like that. Uh, she 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 grows up. She becomes a governess. She's sent to Mr. Rochester. He has uh, a little girl who is under his care. That's why Jane is there to to be a governess to this little girl. And of course, Jane and Mr. Rochester. Because there, there's definitely a lot of tension there. They don't initially get along, and yeah, Mr. Rochester is he, he, he can be really dark and brooding. He, he's a very serious man. He definitely has a, a bit of a dark past. Uh, but yeah, Jane wants to like you know get under the surface and you know figure out what's up, with <laughs> brooding, sexy Mr. Rochester. Um, but so, so yeah, there. This this book is it. It could be a wild and insane ride, and the the adaptation. It manages to kind of deliver on all of those things, all those big heightened moments of tension and suspense, of big huge reveals. Uh, yeah, this adaptation just uh, gorgeously shot, well put together. Um, uh, I think a really perfect adaptation of the book if you've read the book. Uh, fantastic cast. Ruth, Ruth Wilson and Toby Stevens just have just some of the most fantastic chemistry uh, in, in this miniseries. Um, so yeah, if you've read Jane Eyre, I definitely recommend the 2006 adaptation. At number three, the 2013 adaptation of Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. Oh boy, I freaking love Death Comes to Pemberley, you guys. I can't say the same about the book. I watched this miniseries first, and then I got excited, and I was like, oh, there's a book. I'm going to read the book. I did not like the book at all, you guys. I was very disappointed with the book. So yeah, uh, I, I'm sticking with this, this miniseries, definitely. What you need to know about Death Comes to Pemberley, as I mentioned, the 2013 series, I think it had like three episodes, three or four, something like that. Um, and it's essentially the aftermath of what happens in um, Pride and Prejudice. Um, it takes place like some, like quite a number of years after the events of Pride and Prejudice, and yet we see an older, uh, you know, like a slightly older um, Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, uh, who have been, you know, some years into their marriage and whatnot. Um, and, uh, yeah, what transpires in Death Comes to Pemberley, if you can't kind of tell from the title, um, um, Mr. Wickham is back, you guys, because if you've read Pride and Prejudice, you know that Mr. Wickham and Lydia were kind of you know, tossed together through some events. Um, so yeah, Lydia and Mr. Wiggum, they're coming to Pemberley, which is the ancestral home of Mr. Darcy. Uh, but yeah, th there's been a murder on the road. There's been a murder that's happened on the road as they're traveling there. Mr. Wickham is blamed for um, the murder of this person. So it is. It's a big thing of, is he innocent or is he guilty? 
Uh, and yeah, it's like you already kind of have your prejudices about Mr. Wickham because of stuff that happened in Pride and Prejudice. So it's kind of like, yeah, do we trust this guy? Do we not trust him? You know? Um, so yeah. Death Comes to Pamela, I, I, the first time I saw it, I was just really blown away with it for whatever reason. I just, I really loved it. it. It was nice to be back in the world of Pride and Prejudice, but, you know, years after the, the book and whatnot. Um, yeah, I love the cast as well. Um, you have um, uh, Anna Maxwell Martin, who plays uh, uh, Elizabeth Bennet. You have Matthew Reese, who plays Mr. Darcy. Uh, Jenna Coleman playing Lydia, um, Matthew Good playing Mr. Wickham, uh, just such a fantastic cast. Plus, plus Eleanor Tomlinson. If you love Poldark, Eleanor Tomlinson is in this as well, playing the sister of Mr. Darcy. Um, I, I just really loved the concept. It, it, like I mentioned, nice to be back in the world of Pride and Prejudice, but years after the fact. And yeah, a murder investigation of all things. And for me, I, I know a lot of people just kind of a lot of stuff going on because people who had read the book or people who had read or people who had watched this miniseries uh, people just not being impressed sometimes especially if, if they're a Jane Austen purist and whatnot but I personally really loved this miniseries the concept of a murder investigation going on I really liked that um and yeah this murder investigation and kind of all this questioning and blaming and whatever, uh, it really tests the relationship between Darcy and Elizabeth, which I really found appealing, because, yeah, as I mentioned, they've been married for quite a number of years now, and there is, there's a lot of tension between them at this point, for whatever reason, as you kind of find out through the, the miniseries. Uh, and yeah, just, uh, once again, a beautifully shot period drama. I always appreciate that. A great cast, a great concept that I, I really liked. And yeah, getting to revisit characters from a novel that I like, but seeing them in kind of a different, unique way was very appealing for me. At number two, Sanditon, which was just recently released in 2019. Sanditon, if you don't know already, Sanditon is, is, is a book by Jane Austen, but she only wrote about like 11 chapters or so, so the book was unfinished and not really published. Um, so yeah, this, this adaptation of Sanditon, uh, that aired in 2019 was essentially an attempt, okay, we have the first 11 chapters, but yeah, let's flesh out what happens after that 11 chapters, where we think Jane Austen might have gone with the story. Um, I, I initially was, I had, I initially had no interest in Sanditon when it first aired. Um, I was like, I just don't know how I feel about this, the trailers aren't doing it for me, but yeah, once I started watching it, I was hooked, I was obsessed, I freaking fell in love with these characters. Um, and yeah, you have Rose Williams, who's playing your leading heroine. Um, and she gets invited to go to Sanditon. And Sanditon is like kind of a spa resort for the rich and wealthy, essentially. It's here that she meets uh, Theo James's a character, who's, who's kind of a bit snobbish and brooding. That's what you're always going to get with a Jane Austen book, I feel like. Um, so, so yeah. I... I was, uh, once I watched Sanditon, and once it ended, I was horribly uh, just um, uh, upset when it ended. The, if you've seen Sanditon, you know how uh, Sanditon ends, because it ends in a very unusual way that's not typical of the standard uh, Jane Austen ending whatsoever. But I was just really impressed with Sanditon. Uh, uh, I, I, I personally, a lot of people kind of have, people have some varying opinions about Sanditon, but I personally was pretty impressed with Sanditon. I liked the direction that the creative team took with this miniseries and really kind of just made it their own. And even though it wasn't the standard Jane Austen ending, it's kind of like I, I appreciated what they did and there was like something very realistic about where they took the direction of these characters and the direction of the ending and whatnot. But yeah, Sanditon, um, it's just a, it's just a really vibrant uh, mini-series, uh, very colorful and very beautifully shot, and yeah, you spend a lot of time like at the seaside and whatnot. Um, um, yeah, because sometimes you can get period dramas and they can be kind of dark and gloomy. For instance, I, I mentioned Tessa the D'Urbervilles and Jane 
too can be rather dark and gloomy and Sanditon is like this breath of fresh air when it comes to period dramas. Everything's bright and colorful. People wear really colorful outfits and whatnot. Um, so yeah, Sanditon. I definitely recommend it. The creative team always kind of claimed, oh, we were going to do a second season of this, uh, but I, I feel like they're kind of just making that up. I don't think there was ever intended to be a second season of this because of just how it ends. Like I said, the ending of this felt really realistic to me, so I just don't, I, I think a second season would have been kind of maybe stupid, personally. This is definitely a very sexy J Jane Austen. This is not like your your, your grandma's Jane Austen. <laughs> so yeah, Sanditon, A+. Plus. And at number one, I have the 2015 adaptation of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, based off of the book by Susanna Clark. Uh, I am obsessed with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Yeah, guys, it might be, my obsession might be a little unhealthy. <laughs> uh, I, I, this, this miniseries, um, I, I just really loved everything about this miniseries because it, 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 it follows two magicians taking place during the Napoleonic Wars era in England. Um, and, two, and the, the two main characters, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, they're, they're rival magicians. At first they have like a partnership and Mr. Norrell is like a, a tutor of sorts to, to, to Jonathan Strange. But yeah, the, the great dynamic between Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, Mr. Norrell kind of represents like kind of like uh, 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 like the past and in ways that are more conservative especially when it comes to magic and then Jonathan Strange represents the new and the modern and the new ways of thinking where magic can go in the future so yeah this is like an alternate version of of England almost an alternate version of the Napoleonic Wars where magic exists and there's these two magicians and they're able to help during the Napoleonic wars by using their magic in some really clever creative ways um to, to you know to 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 outwit the french and whatnot so yeah uh this adaptation um just i i love the whole concept of some rival magicians um and yeah me being someone who loves all things historical fiction and i love british period dramas it's like this addition of having magic in this kind of fantasy world you know it really kind of added this really unique and different vibrant flavor to like a, to a traditional period drama while re still re retaining a lot of kind of those classic things you get from, from typical period dramas and whatnot um um i i, I loved the 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 cast uh, a big highlight for me is definitely Bertie Carvel who plays the main character of Jonathan Strange he was definitely a, a delight I, I loved his portrayal of that character um, yeah you also have some fairies that show up and I, I, I the fairies the fairies in this world are such a unique and bizarre concept I loved it um, so so yeah I I definitely recommend this miniseries. If you're someone who you, you love all things British television, but you're looking for something maybe a little different and unique, you know, something that's not um, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens or, you know, just something based off of your standard British literature classics, you know, which is kind of what my entire list has been almost so far, you know. So I, I definitely recommend this if you're looking for something very wildly different, something really whimsical and magical that that still feels like a, a traditional British period drama and it kind of has some of those you know literary tropes and whatnot because Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell it can it can almost feel like this cross between something like J.K. Rowling and Charles Dickens and Jane Austen you know but yeah the way Susanna Clarke the inspiration you know since she's the one who wrote the book it, it, the way she she kind of blends and meshes all that together it's just really unique and vibrant and like I said magical and whimsical and I love it. <laughs> so you guys that is it for my top five favorite British period dramas. I love all things British TV you guys and just sexy British people I guess. <laughs> you guys in the comments below uh, I, I, I have probably definitely left out some very important ones to this list. In the comments below what British period dramas do you guys really love and enjoy? Uh, yeah, just to kind of narrow it down, we'll just stick the we'll just stick to things that are like either one season or just a mini series, if you will. So that is it for this uh, video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.